ओम श्री साई राम तपोवनम पारायणम चैप्टर थर्टीन परमम विचित्रम लीला विभूति द मिराकुलस विभूति विभूति व्हाट आई मटीरियलाइज इज अ मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ डिविनिटी विद अ पोटेंट सिग्निफिकेंस एज वेल एज सिम्बोलाइजेशन इट इज सिम्बॉलिक ऑफ द कॉस्मिक इमोटल एंड इन्फिनाइट नेचर ऑफ ऑल फॉर्म्स ऑफ गॉड आत्मा और द स्पिरिट इज वॉट इज लेफ्ट वेन एवरीथिंग वर्ल्डली एंड ट्रांसियंट हैज बर्न अवे इन फर्स्ट प्लेस it is symbolic of the life and death cycle in which everything ultimately reduces itself to ash for dust through art unto dust shall through re- returns ash or dust is the final condition it can undergo no further change in the spiritual context it constitutes a warning to the recipient to give up desires burn all passions and achievements and temptation in the fires of worship which makes one pure in thought word and deed it is a symbol of divinity vibhuti cancels cancer once an advocate arrived at prashanthanilayam he was a chronic smoker cancer afflicted his throat doctors advised surgery along with radiation and chemotherapy he desired to obtain swami's permission before the commencement of the treatment on arrival the ever merciful bhagwan invited him into the interview room asking him to hold his palms together to form a bowl He materialized and poured a large quantity of vibhuti into them, and asked him to eat it all. It was dark in color and tasted like bitter gourd. Swami affectionately cajoled and persuaded and helped him to finish it. After the interview, the man walked out and went into the canteen for a cup of coffee. As he was at it, his eyes fell on the nearby pakodas, a savory disk, crisp, crisply fried in oil. unable to resist he ate a plateful due to pain in his throat he had not been able to eat properly for a long time despite his keen desire and strong taste for food but now he noticed that he could eat comfortably and relish it he was surprised with his finger he probed inside his mouth at the cancer affected spot he felt no pain at all he realized that the cancer had gone he was overwhelmed tears flooded his eyes as he remembered bhagwan's mercy When on the next day Swami again called him into the interview room he expressed his gratitude to Swami and fell on his feet he told Swami that he was proficient in Sindhi and begged to be permitted to translate and publish Sindhi edition of Sanatana Sarathi Swami replied it is only for that purpose i have made you come to puttaparthi from then on the blessed person has been translating and publishing Sanatana Sarathi in Sindhi dono polo tribal leaders surrendered stone before its reconstitution the region now called arunachal pradesh was formerly a part of assam most of its people are tribals they were demanding a separate state for themselves and were carrying on guerrilla warfare against the government of assam the government made every effort to please them and win them over it spent crores of rupees in their territory on development programs hospitals roads schools and other facilities still the tribals were not satisfied and continued with their separatist demand in this situation one of the tribal leaders fell ill with an undiagnosed disease the government gave him plenty of medical assistance it got medical tests carried out in reputable hospitals in calcutta and new delhi nothing helped he was not able to eat anything at all whatever he used to eat he would vomit it his friends and relatives lost all hope sri raja hom sri raja home secretary in the state had an idea what if the patient could be taken to the divine presence of bhagwan shri satya sai baba it might help the permission was sought from the government of india ultimately a group of 29 persons including the ailing tribal leader set out in the name of all india tour bharat darshan and reached puttaparthi as they seated themselves in the audience hall swami went to them directly and asked in hindi where are you from the secretary replied that they are from assam swami said in english go inside so they all trooped inside into the interview room walked walking no doubt but almost like running in their delight and eagerness after the public audience was over swami came into the interview room he materialized vibhuti gave it on the tribal leader and directed him to eat it he sat on his throne and inquired what brings you here the secretary explained we have come for your darshan this tribal leader is having some stomach problem no treatment has been helped medical test conducted in calcutta and delhi failed to identify the disease he is unable to contain any solid food as a result 
tribal people of that region have lost faith in our medical system and procedures and hospitals. This man is a prominent tribal leader and only you can heal him. Swami assured him, don't worry, he will be fully cured. Then Swami began to talk to the tribal visitors in their own language. He talked of their village and their environment. He mentioned how the villagers had thought a building, thought of a building, a temple for the sun god and the moon god. As he talked, Swami materialized an intricately engraved circular copper plate, nine inches in diameter. On one side, the sun and on the other side, moon were carved. He drew their attention to the delicate craftsmanship of the plate and declared that the temple proposed to be built would become known as the Dono Polo, meaning the sun and the moon in their tribal language. He directed the astonished tribals to install this copper plate, Yantra, in the temple and to worship it regularly. He said that the worship of God is always beneficial. He blessed them with Vibhuti Prasadam and privilege of touching his lotus feet. The tribals took leave of him with hearts overflowing with joy and happiness. They then made their way to the canteen for refreshments. Their leaders saw some white circular pieces of food and asked that they be served to him. The pieces were known as idli, a rice and black gram preparation. His companions were afraid that the solid food might cause vomiting or terrible stomachache as usual. However, since Swami had granted him divine assurance, they hesitatingly allowed him to consume idli. A plate of idlis and the accompanying sauce was finished by him. In seconds, relishing it, he consumed another plateful. While his companions watching it, watched it in unbelieving astonishment, this man who, has, who had not tasted any solid food for several years ate idli after idli, a good or 32 of them. The group felt it was a miraculous and enjoyed every bit of it. The leader told his friends, there is no ordinary man with a little vibhuti he has completely cured me within minutes of a disease I had suffered for years and years. There is no doubt that he is God incarnate. He talked of this temple, Dono Polo, we are planning to build for our favorite deities and created the two images. Let us surrender to him and strictly follow every word of what he said. Bhagwan Sai's divine vibhuti healed the tribal leader in moments. When we hear about this magnificent episode and Bhagwan's love and benevolence, so readily and profusely showered, we are moved to bow our heads in obeisance to him. Wondrous Potency of Vibhuti Vibhuti, the speciality of Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba, not only bestows good health but in wonderful manner fulfills other deeds also. Patterson was a very successful businessman of Canada. He travels all over the world in connection with his businesses. On one, of, on one such travels, he came to India and met Dr. Balakrishna, son of Professor Bhagavantam. Dr. Balakrishna invited him to his home. The residence was decorated like a temple. In the middle of the puja dais, there was a throne on which a beautiful photograph of Swami was placed. Patterson was quite impressed and inquired whose picture it was. Dr. Balakrishna told him about Baba and his divine powers. His love and compassion and how he incarnated in answer to his prayers of devout and saintly persons of eminence for bringing about the deliverance of humanity. As Patterson, bringing, as Patterson heard about Baba, his interest grew. He also felt very pleased. He asked Dr. Balakrishna for something like a memento or token so that it would serve to remind him constantly about Sri Satya Sai Baba. He probably expected a photograph or a picture of Swami, but Dr. Balakrishna thought of something more precious. He felt that the best moment of Swami would be Baba's Vibhuti. So he gave Patterson a small packet of it. Patterson felt somewhat dismayed and asked, Ashes? Do you give me ashes to remind of this greatest yogi? Balakrishna gently explained, These are no ordinary ashes. It is divine, Vibhuti. It is priceless, invaluable. If you get into some serious trouble and you think that Swami's compassion alone can save you, put a little of it in your mouth and pray to him. Patterson returned by air to New York via London. He was given a seat among women and children. They were making terrible disturbance and noise. He felt unduly disturbed and very uncomfortable. As the aircraft was nearing London, he suddenly remembered the packet of Vibhuti and Dr. Balakrishna's dis description of its virtues. He immediately opened the packet, placed a little of the holy powder on his tongue and earnestly prayed to Sri Satya Sai. He asked Baba to see that he's provided a more comfortable seat, at least on the onward journey from London to New York. 
When he landed in London, he was surprised to hear his name on the public announcement system. The announcement mentioned his name, him by his name and directed him to go to the airline office immediately. When he reached there, he was told that he was allotted a seat in first class on the London to New York flight. He was immensely pleasured, pleased and offered to pay the extra charges, the officer on duty told him, to his utter surprise. That the additional fare had totally had already been paid on his behalf. Patterson's heart leaped. Just by consuming a little of Baba's vibhuti and remembering the name of Baba, he could get Baba's helping hand thousands of miles away and have his wish fulfilled. He was moved by Baba's mercy and love. How wondrous is the potency of Baba's vibhuti! It is not only the holiest one, but also it cures any ailment, however chronic it is, and it has the potency to fulfill any desire of an ardent devotee. What a miraculous one! Let's daily use it with love and devotion. Paramam Pavitram Baba Vibhutim, Paramam Vichitram Leela Vibhutim, Paramartha Ishtartha Moksha Pradatam, Baba Vibhutim Idam Ashrayami. Our humblest homage to the embodiment of love and compassion. Om Shri Satyasai Parabrahmane Namaha, Shanti 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 Hi. End of chapter 13. Om Sai Shwaraya Vidmahe Satya Devaya Dhimahe Tanna Sarva Prachodaya Atta